Hey guys, this is Ben from Senna Samples. Today I want to show you a few automation techniques to make your contact instruments more expressive. Let's load up the violin from Cine String Solo so I can show you a few of these techniques. To map a parameter in contact to a MIDI CC, first right click the knob or fader, learn MIDI CC automation, and then move the knob or fader on your MIDI controller. If you click on the Automation tab and then go to MIDI Automation, you can see all of your MIDI CC assignments. Moving the MIDI CC makes a little red block appear next to it and also scrolls the window to that CC. One of the great things about this window is that it allows you to define a minimum and maximum range for your MIDI CCs. In this example, we're going to be exaggerating the dynamics of Violin 1 articulations patch from Cinestring Solo. As you can hear, that's a very exaggerated dynamic change. That's probably more than what we're looking for. So to reduce this dynamic change a bit, we can go to MIDI CC1 and find our MIDI assignment, channel fader 1, and change it from 60 to 100%. So as you can see, as I move the mod wheel up and down, this only goes from 60 to 100% which exaggerates it slightly. This is really great if you don't want to use MIDI CC11 as a volume trim. You can control all of your dynamics just by using CC1. This is also a great way to invert any of your MIDI CC assignments. So you can see as I move the mod wheel up, this fader goes down. Another technique that you can use is using a MIDI CC to control the relative depth of the mix. First I'll learn MIDI CC2 to the full mix, and then I'll also learn MIDI CC2 to the close mix. And then I'll invert the close mix. Let's reduce the range of this effect. So I'm going to go from 30% to 100 on both. Still a little dip in volume. So let's go from 30 to 75. That's a little bit better. As you can hear, as I increase my MIDI CC2 value, the violin sounds further away. This is a great technique for changing mic perspectives on the fly. For example, if you want to feature an instrument at different parts in the mix. Another feature of Sinistring Solo is the accent overlay. This function layers a spiccato, staccato, or marcato sample over the top of your sustains or legato transitions to give them a little bit of extra bite. Let me exaggerate it so you can hear it. Another useful thing that you can do with this technique is to map MIDI CC1 to this volume knob here, which controls the volume of this overlay. So it really only pokes through when you're playing really loud legato transitions or sustains. So we can further fine tune this. Maybe you want it to poke through a little bit more. We can set this to 80 to 100. So it just ducks it a little bit as the, the mod wheel goes down. 
Maybe a little bit more than that. Let's try 60 to 100. That sounds pretty good. One more advanced technique is to build your own Dynamics EQs. To do this, click on the wrench and go into the back end of Contact and look for Insert Effects and add it, an EQ here. I like the solid G EQ. Here you can add a low shelf and a high shelf filter. Let's map this to MIDI CC2. You can hear it boosting the low frequencies here. But all we really want to do is cut low frequencies. So let's click on MIDI CC2 and go to Gain, and say from 0 to 50%. So here, all we're doing is attenuating. Let's do the same thing with the high shelf. This is a simple way to create a Dynamics EQ if your instrument doesn't have one. This feature is already built into the violin and Sinistring Solo, so this is really just an example. But if you want to exaggerate the dynamics that are already there, you can use this technique. Alright guys, thanks for watching.